Right, Chelsea Football Club, free club America, nil. And before we get into it, before you lot tell me that it's just a pre-season friendly and it doesn't mean all that much and I shouldn't be going well over the top, you are wrong. Because I, ladies and gentlemen, have been absolutely pining for a Chelsea win. I have been desperate to see a performance that good and I'm so, so impressed with what I saw last night. My God, does this feel good? What a performance from the boys. So many positives to take from this match. Maybe one or two at a push negatives, and we will speak about those. But I'm absolutely buzzing to be making this video. And some of you may be wondering why this video is coming to you somewhat late. Obviously, I tried to get the Celtic review out straight away after the game. And the reason for that is I'm actually sat as we speak in Los Angeles. I'm in LA. You should be able to see. I'm going to stick some overlay footage now. You should be able to see the view from my room. Obviously, I'm out here covering the boxing with the pain game. We're here for the Terence Crawford against Madrimov fight. Andy Ruiz on the card. Some really, really big fights on that card. Big, big thank you to the big dog, my friend, True Geordie, who's obviously got me out here helping as part of the team covering the event. I'm absolutely buzzing for it, but I couldn't get a video out for you guys in time last night. So here it is. I hope you'll like it. Let's get into the game. But before we do that, people, welcome back to the Joey Knight podcast. If you are new around here at the end of the video, if you like the content and you want to see more for myself, please hit that subscribe button. I'm desperate, absolutely desperate to reach 100,000 subscribers before the start of the Premier League season. I think we're only just over 1,000 off by now. So if you're not already subscribed, if you've got a friend who watches me that is not already subscribed, make sure you remind them to. Make sure you do if you're not already. And by the way, how good does this look? How good does this kit look? I got it with my bespoke link that is linked in the description right now. That takes you to the Chelsea Mega Store where you can purchase one of these bad boys. And not only that, you're going to get 10% off. It doesn't get better than that. Let's get into the video. Right, so you can see on screen now the team that started the game. This is positionally how it looked to me. I had been saying that I wanted to see Reese James on the right side of that back three, and that is what we saw in this game. Tossing out of a bio, he is game by game becoming a more important player for Chelsea Football Club. And when he was bought in on a free transfer, I think a few of you guys may have seen him as somewhat of a rotation player. I'm telling you right now, he's probably Probably going to be one of, if not our most important centre-backs this season. Badia Shaw on the left-hand side. Now, Romeo Lavia was occupying that central defensive midfield space and he had Malo Gusto next to him this time out. Kean and Dewsbury Hall got his first start for Chelsea Football Club alongside him, the pre-season star boy, Christopher Nkunku. And then you had Madawaki and Raheem Sterling, either side of Mark Gu. And this game just started so well for Chelsea Football Club. And some of our recent games have started well and within 10, 15 minutes or so we had tailed off. But as you're going to see here from my match notes, that didn't happen. Two minutes into the game, Rome Romeo Lavia picks up the ball on the right-hand side of the Club America half. And this was a warning sign for me of what I've been saying about Romeo Lavia. Because I believe that when Romeo Lavia came into Chelsea Football Club, quite a lot of people thought that he was just going to be that natural central, uh, central defensive midfielder, I should say, who sort of will win the ball, get stuck in. Ultimately, his main priority will be protecting that defence. And as much as I think he's brilliant in doing that, and as much as I think the statistics would show that he's very good in doing that. I have always believed that he offers so, so much more than that. During his time at Southampton, where I watched a lot of him, I thought that his creativity and attacking prowess for that was somewhat going under the radar. So when he was signed, I was trying to bang the drum and let people know that, listen, we're getting a brilliant defensive player here, but we're also getting a man who can start attacks and can contribute towards those attacks. And he really, really showed that he could do that in this moment. He takes on two men, beat in both of them before being absolutely steamrolled. Awful challenge by the Club America defender. And he won a very well-deserved and very legitimate, in my opinion, penalty. Well, kind of. I mean, listen, he might have given Tom Daly a run for his money with that dive, but I don't care. There's no VAR. There's no VAR for both teams, so it works both ways. Unless it's the opposition cheating against us, then it's really, really not on. But for this one, regardless, I don't mind it. Chelsea win the spot kick. The main man, Christopher Nkunku, steps up, slots it home. And that 
is the start that we so desperately needed in this game. And you could tell that the confidence was very much running through Romeo Lavia's veins at this point because that ability to beat a man, to open up spaces, and then to drive at the defence was something he showed just moments later. Receiving the ball from Reese James, takes it on the turn. His man that was marking him is somewhat... 10 yards or so behind him by the time he took it on the turn. He then leaves his man wondering what happened. He drives towards the Club America goal. He passes to Keenan Dewsbury Hall. And this was one of our first glimpses to see the passing range, the ability, the vision of Keenan Dewsbury Hall as he slots a lovely ball through to Mark Yu. Not only was it a lovely ball, it showed really good understanding between the two players because Mark Yu had to read exactly what Keenan Dewsbury Hall was doing with the ball. He then gets through, I think it's a left-footed shot on goal, test the goalkeeper, shot on target, nothing wrong with it, doesn't manage to convert it, but he wouldn't have to wait long. But before we move on to Mark you not having to wait long to open his account, Club America did fashion himself a chance, they get the ball on the left hand side, good footwork from the player, he then drives a left footed shot towards goal at Robert Sanchez, and Robert Sanchez somewhat redeems himself for the performance we saw against Celtic. He really, really gets a good save on that. Stretches out high and wide, manages to push the ball over the bar. And it's a save that Robert Sanchez will be very, very happy to make because we saw the new boy, Jorgensen, who I've had a, quite a few people either messaging me, inboxing me, telling me that I look a little bit like. I'm not too sure on that one, but you lot can be the judge of that one in the comments. Um, Sanchez makes a good save. I've never had any real doubt about Sanchez's save um, um, saves, I should say, from long shots, things like that. My main concern is his judgment with his distribution. But either way, we didn't see too much of that in a negative light in this match. A very good save from Sanchez. It's going to be very interesting to see who gets a uh, number one position out of him and Jorgensen. My gut instinct right now would tell me it could be Jorgensen. I think we'll see Jorgensen start the next match. But either way, when called upon, Sanchez did the job in this match. Now, if you don't think that I have already spent enough time I'm glazing over Romeo Lavia, do not worry as I'm about to do it again. Because 15 minutes or so in, Club America have the ball in our half. They are dispossessed. And when this happens, Romeo Lavia needs not a second of hesitation before he puts the laces through the ball, perfectly weighted pass to Raheem Sterling, who is already making that run. The understanding, the telepathy is there at this moment in time between Romeo Lavia and Raheem Sterling. And let's be honest, between all of the boys, Everyone just looked on the same page here, by the way. Sterling darts up the wing. He slows the ball down, shows good footwork in doing so. And then he releases the ball, I would say, on a plate to Keenan Dewsbury Hall, who does put it over the bar. He actually gets an opportunity, Keenan Dewsbury Hall, to right the wrongs of that miss just moments later. Club America attempting to play out from the back again. Sterling himself does some great work in winning the ball, dispossessing the Club America player, um, moves the ball on. Sterling actually makes the, the run out wide. Keenan Dewsbury Hall sees that, uses it as somewhat of a, a deploy. Is it a deploy or a decoy? One of the two. Uses that. The man goes to him and Keenan Dewsbury Hall takes the shot on his left foot at goal. He will be really disappointed to have not hit the target with that one. But it is his first game back. Not only his first game for Chelsea, it's his first game back from an injury. And with tougher tests to come, I do believe you will see a level up in the performance from Keenan Dewsbury Hall. And I say the performance, that's probably the wrong word to use there. Just the clinicalness, just the finishing, really, because the performance from Keenan Dewsbury Hall really, really impressed me. A couple of minutes later, he does make a significant impact on his Chelsea debut. Once again, Chelsea pressing from the front. I love this. I love what I was seeing in the first half. The first half was so good for us, you know. The front foot tactics played dividends. The boys put out wide to Keenan Dewsbury Hall and he's really forced into a somewhat weak position, but he shows his class. Lovely ball over the top. It meets the head of Mark Gu. And listen, people, I know you think I might be going over the top here. He is an instant favourite of mine. Mark you is going to be such an important player for Chelsea Football Club this season, man. He is already looking like a Premier League striker. I think he's going to flourish in his first season under Enzo Maresca. There was some talk early on about will he be loaned straight out. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Honestly, at £5 million, we have absolutely pulled Barcelona's pants down on this deal. And I am very much here for it. We had a few more half chances in that first half. There was a ball that came in along the box. Keenan Dewsbury Hall 
caught again in a perfect position, but he actually slipped over. Uh, Christopher Nkunku also receives the ball on the sort of right-hand side there. He tests the goalkeeper. Good shot on target. And at half-time, as the whistle blows, I just sit there and think, this is going so well for us. This is going so well for us. And I honestly could not be happier with what I had seen. You know, a few key players back. More importantly, a few players that have been in and out in preseason, really looking like they're starting to form an understanding with each other, really starting to gel. And this team is cooking. And because of that, and the fact that the boys all look like they're singing off the same hymn sheet for now, I was very happy to not see wholesale changes straight away at half time. I think that despite a 2 0 lead, we needed to carry on. We needed to keep our foot on the throat of the Club America defenders, and we needed to carry on pressing, carry on creating chances into that second half rather than losing control in the game. And one very easy way, I believe, to lose control in the game is if you make 11 subs at half time, like we pretty much did against Red. Wrexham, obviously a little bit less against Celtic, but that game was gone by that point. What we did see is both Jorgensen, the new goalkeeper, and Enzo Fernandez introduced at half time. Then the more wholesale changes came around the hour mark when obviously we brought Mudrik on, Ugochukwu, Renato Vega, Amanda Broha, Wesley Fofana. And then that for me is where the game somewhat settled a little bit. Club America having a few half chances here and there. Nothing too threatening. Um, Chelsea still looking really good. And Christopher Nkunku very much being the most threatening player for Chelsea Football Club here. There was a moment, wasn't there? Everyone's seen it. Everyone's glazed over this and I'm no different. He picks up the ball. Listen... It was giving me Eden Hazard vibes. It really, really was. He darts in and out of, what, four or five defenders, ends up rounding the goalkeeper, goes down this time again. I think there'll be a little bit of argument over the penalty. I do think it was definitely a penalty. I think there's a way in which you can win a penalty, and I would say that Chris Frenkunku won that penalty. It's tactical, but at the same time, by the letter of the law, it is a penalty. Um, listen, I've said it once. I'll say it again. The Premier League are not ready for Christopher Nkunku. What we saw from Christopher Nkunku last season was Christopher Nkunku at about 20%, 30% maximum. And even in doing so, he popped up in big moments, scoring the goal against Wolves, wriggling out of tight spaces against Liverpool and scoring. He showed his class. But when you get him at 100%, even when you get him at 80%, this boy will be a difference maker for us next season. He came off with what some people said was a knock, but don't worry, I'm going to pour cold water on that in a minute from some quotes by Enzo Maresca. But honestly, man, providing we can keep him fit, I, as I say, the Premier League are not going to be ready for Christopher Nkunku next season. He will be up there with our most important players. And mark my words, he will definitely end up with double-digit goals and assists. In fact, double-digit, what, what does that mean? 10? He's going to end up with double that. He will end up with 20 to 25 goals and assists this coming season. And despite that, maybe not putting him at the top of the goals and assists chart in the Premier League, you've got to remember Cole Palmer will do the same, definitely. And there'll be a few players in there that may jump out, may surprise us. Nicholas Jackson, he'll do the same, in my opinion. And do you know what I love about him? 27 years old, 28 this season he will turn. He has real leadership qualities and he is ready for the here and now. There's no potential, no prospect with this man. Christopher Nkunku is ready to come in and be a massive, massive difference maker. And if you end up seeing him on the pitch with Cole Palmer on the pitch at the same time... We're going to be dangerous. We are going to be dangerous. So there you go. The match finishes 3-0 to Chelsea fan. And as a fan base, I think it's time to get excited, you know, because we've been crying out for a performance like this. And I don't care if you're one of those that is going to be writing in the comments, no, Joey's going over the top. I don't care. You clearly haven't watched my channel because I do go over the top. We like it. You like it. We're all here for it. Chelsea are on fire after that one. Listen, Enzo Maresca, he has definitely seen the talent from this Chelsea squad on the training field. However, now he has seen it put into practice in this match. Now, a few takeaways from the game. I've already said that Christopher Nkunku looks unbelievable. Um, and as for the concern around that possible injury, the signs look good, actually, because Enzo Maresca spoke about the fact that he came off. He spoke about the fact that Melo Gusto came off and Benoit Badiashil, and there was concern around all of them. But he said with all of them, he feels like it is just a case of cramp. And you've got to understand, it's probably going to be that, you know, we've played three matches in what, the space of a week or so, eight days, something like that. I think there would have only been one or two training sessions in between the Celtic game and this game. 
game. Also, lots of traveling. Believe me, there is a lot of traveling when you're playing over in America. I flew to New York earlier on in the, uh, the year, and I think it took me eight hours or something. This flight to LA took me 11 hours. So when you're constantly jumping on and off airplanes and flying, whether it be in first class or not, it is going to take its toll on your body somewhat. Um, speaking of Malagusto, I actually thought he fared really well in that inverted role, you know. I've never had any doubt about Malagusto being able to play on the left-hand side. I saw him on the left-hand side multiple times last season, probably three, four matches on the left-hand side, and he did not look out of place at all. Oh, Melo Gusto can do a bit of everything. And um, I did a Thrive or Dive video, didn't I? And I said that Dive might be the word we have to use if we're being strong with Melo Gusto because I don't think systematically he is going to suit a system where wingers are not, bom uh, sorry, fullbacks are not bombing up that wing. But I tell you what, he's already gone some way to proving me wrong. And when I said that, that was never any doubt upon Melo Gusto's ability. I think Melo Gusto is absolutely brilliant. I think he's one for the future in terms of world football, not just in terms of Chelsea Football Club. And this showing somewhat damages Ben Chilwell's chances even further because Melo Gusto showed better than I think Ben Chilwell can do in that inverted role. However, Chile did get on for a few minutes and he did impress in those few minutes. You know, he was quite important in that short cameo in popping up, stopping us conceding a goal late on, which is really, really valuable in my opinion because a clean sheet will go a long way to installing some confidence in that defence that did really need a bit of confidence. I tell you, it was good tossing. Tossing at her about her, man. He's going to play so many games for us this season. He is really good. Dewsbury Hall, as I say, a mixed debut for him. But the signs are good. The signs are that this man is going to be a top, top player for Chelsea. Very important. I love the vision. I love the creativity. I was speaking to Josh about Dewsbury Hall last night, and he was likening him to Conor Gallagher, saying that he may do a similar job. I don't know whether it will be the exact same. I really don't. But if defensively and if ground covered, he can match the numbers of Conor Gallagher, I actually do have no doubt that he is a, a more creative, probably more clinical player, definitely in his passing and, and, and maybe not shown on yesterday's showing, but his finishing than Conor Gallagher. Listen, we will speak about Conor Gallagher. We will speak about it because it's a, it's a negative story coming out of Stamford Bridge with obviously the move to Atletico Madrid. But this is a positive video. I want to keep it positive and I want the big dog with me when we do speak about it. So I'll get him in my room. We'll mic him up and we'll put out a video on that very, very shortly. But on Dewsbury Hall, the best is yet to come. Good to see Enzo Fernandez back on the pitch. Even better, at least from the outside, to look like he's integrating back in to this team. Especially building bridges with Wesley Fofana, who I'm going to give a massive shout out to here. Because I really admire and have to give a lot of props to the maturity and the handling that we've seen from Wesley Fofana once Enzo Fernandez has been reintroduced back into the team. You know, he could have thrown his toys out the pram. Maybe that's not a good expression to use here. I don't mean that it would be throwing his toys out the pram, but he could have kicked up a fuss um, and he hasn't. He showed he showed real class, Wesley Fofana, um, in a situation where many other players probably would have been right to continue a little bit of beef there or whatnot. So big, big shout out to Wesley Fofana. I think that comes from myself and the whole fan base. We really appreciate um, Wesley Fofana and all of the other players sort of really just not continuing this on um, whether they're right or wrong to do so. Just really helping Enzo Fernandez integrate back into that side. But I tell you what, when I speak about him integrating back into that side, Enzo Maresca He's showing me already that he's going to be a ruthless manager. And I don't believe that the price tag of Enzo Fernandez will instantly make him a guaranteed starter for Enzo Maresca because Romeo Lavia is the man that I feel will probably be occupying that position um, or at least competing for it with Enzo Fernandez. So I don't think that Enzo Fernandez's price tag is going to naturally just put him ahead of Romeo Lavia because what we've seen from Romeo Lavia is so, so good, you know. Maybe he... Didn't look great in the Celtic game, but I tell you what, he looked good in the Wrexham game. He looked really good in the game yesterday. I'm really impressed by Romeo Lavia. I think we're going to see great things from him this season. So my gut instinct is that actually Enzo Maresca will probably experiment somewhat with Enzo Fernandez in the coming games. I think that we might see him pushed a little bit further forward. But then obviously it comes with the, the question of when Cole Palmer comes back, when Caicedo's back in the team... 
who's going to who's gonna fit in? We're going to have a struggle fitting all these boys in, you know. Good job we're going to have so many games and they're going to be coming thick and fast and we're definitely winning the Conference League because that means everyone will get minutes. Rhys James, he looked good in that right-hand side centre-back role. That's where myself and Josh suggested that we should try and see him. He played well there. He really did. Let's finish with one or two negatives, and we're just, we're just finished with them, um, the non the non the non we should call it that, the non penalty situation, it's not the first time we've seen this, I hope it is the last time we've seen this, um, it should have been in Kunku's pen, it really should have been in Kunku's pen, he won it, he should have took it, he converted it, maybe there would be a bigger issue made of this if Noni Madueke had not converted the penalty, and listen, Noni Madueke is a good penalty taker, I've got nothing, <sighs> You know, no major problem with it, but I do feel like it should have been in Kunku's penalty in that one. And it's a good job that the manager, straight away, Enzo Maresca, has come out, defused the situation by saying that Noni Madueke, um should have given the ball to Nkunku. And ultimately, neither Noni or Nkunku will be taking the penalties when Cole Palmer's back because he will be first choice penalty taker. If Cole Palmer's not on the field, though, it should be in Kunku in my opinion. And I don't think you'll see too much of that, you know. I don't think you'll see too much of that this season from any of our players. Jackson, Noni Madueke, because I do think that Enzo Maresca will prove himself to be a lot more ruthless than Pochettino had been in the past. But impressed by what I saw from Noni Madueke. Other than that, I think he's going to be a crucial player for us under Enzo Maresca. I'm not going to go in on him. It's a pre-season friendly, but it can't keep happening. It's got to stop now. Amanda Broha. Amanda Broha, Amanda Broha. I feel really sorry for Broha because not only is he low on confidence and visibly frustrated when he takes to the field, but I just really do feel like that injury has oh, it's killed him, hasn't it? it? It's hampered him so, so much. And when he reflects back on how he picked up that injury, a mid-season friendly, I think it was against Aston Villa, wasn't it? Mid-season friendly. What's the need for a mid-season friendly? So if, and I really hope this isn't the case, at the end of his career, he looks back on that injury and thinks, you know, I picked it up in a, in a meaningless game. That A meaningless game has ruined my career. Maybe I'm jumping the gun. Maybe I am. But for now, Jackson, Gu, they're both ahead of him. They're clear of him, if I'm honest. And I still do feel like there'll be movement um, maybe late on in the window when it comes to bringing in, potentially bringing in a striker. Will it be Osman? I don't know. Me and Josh will speak about that in a separate video. But yeah, I think the uh, I think the end is near for Amanda Broha in his Chelsea career. He's been linked with AC Milan. Can't see him going there and getting in the team. Josh, uh, Josh, Josh suggested Everton. I think that's a good fit. If they get rid of Calvert-Lewin as well, um, I think that's a good fit. This might sound disrespectful. I wouldn't even rule him out dropping down to the championship, um, rebuilding his confidence there, because I think he could could be a really good player in the championship, you know. Look at strikers that haven't succeeded to break into the Chelsea first team that came out of the academy and then ripped it up in the championship. There's been a few of them. Bamford, he comes to mind. Um, I think it's the time. I do think it's the time for Brower to move on. Also, because my phone's going off, it might have pinged a few times in this video. Um, I do need to also call time on this video. But people, if you haven't already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. It feels good to wake up this morning to a Chelsea win. I don't know what time it is, your lot's time, if you're UK-based, but I'm recording this at about 6am LA time. So, yeah. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, me and Josh will sit down, do a video where we speak about Gallagher, we speak about the departures, the incomings, all of that stuff. But for now, people, I will see you all in the next one.